Thank you very much, Mallory. Uh, this is my favorite day. It's just sort of the sense about these could be the students that I'll have the privilege of getting to know over the course of the next four years. There's sort of an excitement about that possibility of who are the students and who are their families and is there a fit with Seattle University. So I love being able to be at this day. Congratulations for being accepted at Seattle University. We've accepted you. Now we hope that you also will accept us. How do you go about that decision of deciding where to go? I like to say, choose a college the way in which you would choose a friend. You choose a friend by, do you have common interests? Is there something that is similar between you and the friend? Is there a fit? Are you comfortable with that friend? Can you be at home? Can you relax? Is the other person interesting, stretching, somewhat different from you? Do you want to be around the friend? Do you want to do things together? Can you have fun together? And can you share deeper things with that person? In a similar way, you choose a university in that sort of intuition of the fit with that particular college or that university. So our acceptance of you is really an invitation to friendship. Another thing I like to say is a way of figuring out where to choose is to mentally move into a college or university. And I'd encourage you today mentally move into Seattle University and just imagine, is this the right place for me? Move in, for instance, here in this north court of the Connolly Center and imagine yourself at a women's volleyball match or a women's basketball game vying for championship in the Western Athletic Conference. See yourself down at the fitness center with your classmates in an evening at about 8 o'clock having a good time and getting in shape. See yourself in our student center and sort of mentally move in and where would be the place in the Cherry Street Cafe where you would choose to have lunch or dinner or what piece of artwork would you sit under in the student center. Go into the library and look at all six floors and find what would be your spot there with what kind of technology or maybe a quiet space or a lounge or at a cafe. Or walk through the quadrangle and the, see the fountain or walk through the plaza and see the running man statue and imagine yourself going to class on a morning, waking up with a cup of Starbucks and heading for class. This is Seattle. And imagine yourself there and mentally move in to what that might be like. Go into a classroom and sit there. You need to see the size of what our classrooms are and imagine your classmates with you and with the professor. Go by our Center for Service and Community Engagement and mentally move in how you might go there and volunteer for service in our neighborhood with kids in grade schools. Or stop by the chapel and ask yourself, would this be a place that if I needed a moment in a quiet, holy place during my years in college, would this be a great place for me to be? and to be quiet and to ask for God's help for myself or my family or my grandparents. And do take a look at that residence hall room and see yourself living there. So I suggest that one way of deciding is to mentally move in and to see, is that the place that could be home for you for the next years? I think that there's an annual miracle that is worked at Seattle U. As a priest, I sort of like miracles. And the miracle that has worked, I really believe this, is this is a great university with wonderful professors. You're going to hear from one in just a moment, and programs and facilities and location and mission. But really what makes us to be who we are is who are the students who choose us? What kind of student chooses Seattle University? And annually there's this miracle of the students who choose Seattle University and make it to be what it really is. What are they like? There are students who can really just be themselves and want to be able to just be themselves in college. They're very diverse and they love a diverse environment and context. They want to be someplace where they're accepted for who they are and to accept other people 
for who they are. They love being in a city like Seattle and everything that's about it. It's art, it's culture, it's music, it's grandeur, it's beauty, it's technology, it's businesses, it's corporations, but they also want to be in mountains and Puget Sound and lakes and the beauty of this kind of region. These are students who are focused on service and they want to be involved in public issues. They want to debate things. Most often they're interested in their own spirituality and want a place that they can explore it or their faith. Or if they're Catholic, they want to make it their own or to see what it means for them most deeply. They're sort of curious about, well, what is this famous Jesuit education that Seattle University is? The students who choose us are relaxed and fun. They're not one bit entitled or elitist or cliquish. That's not the kind of student that chooses Seattle University. They want community, but they don't want a forced or an artificial community. They want a free and open kind of a community. They're global citizens and they're global travelers. So parents get ready for paying the bill on that global travel part. <laughs> they're hopeful students. They want not to be anonymous in college. They want to know their professors and they want their professors to know them, but not to know them too well, just to know them somewhat. <laughs> they are curious. They've got an intellectual passion. They're glad to be academically challenged. That's the annual miracle that has worked, is what are the kinds of students that choose a Seattle University? So what I want to tell you this morning is, if you choose Seattle University, you can work a miracle. Now this week, just some of the interactions that I had with students. There was a group of about a dozen students who wanted to meet with me, and they wanted to talk through how I deal with the issue of church and gender identity, the conflicts involved in that. And that was Justin and Matthew and Aaron and Osbaldo and Rosie and Carlos and Chris and Katie, and we talked for an hour about that, and they saw some of the ways in which I deal with that and sort of the challenges that they have in dealing with that. And that group of students has convinced our technology here to put on our computers a good search, that every time you search through the good search, there's a little bit of a tiny donation that goes to a good cause. Three students came to my office this week and they wanted to talk with me about a business plan that they were developing for the Albers School of Business and Economics. And it was Duran, an African-American student, and Philip, a Filipino student, and Sinead, a Somali student. They came to in my office and they sat in the leather chairs and they talked about their business plan and it was really fascinating to meet with them. And I looked at Duran and I thought, boy, that suit that he's wearing and that tie, he looks really uncomfortable. But he's got it on, and he wants the president to examine his business plan. And then one day this week, we named a new sculpture. There's a pile of these plastic cubes that has just been donated by a donor. And we've had a contest, and students submitted 165 names for what they might call this. And Katie Vyalaskevich, our student body president, opened the envelope and it will be called, and you can pronounce it two ways, justice or just ice. <laughs> and take a look at it. It's between the library and the student center along that balcony. And we had a rare thing this week. We had a rally. We had a rally of the GLBTQ students together with graduate students and law students and faculty and staff putting forward some recommendations of how our university could do better in respecting and helping them. And Andrew's going to speak to you, and if he doesn't tell you his story, I'll tell it for him, because I interviewed Andrew this year, and I gave a talk, The Journey of Two College Students with the Poor, and Andrew was one of them. The other one was Rebecca, and Rebecca has been coming to Seattle U and she thought she would work with high school students and then she found herself working with middle aged school students and then with younger students and then with pre-K students and now she's working with one and two year old neglected students at Child Haven. And she is amazing in what she's discovering in doing that and she says the course that's helped her most is she's taking a course called the Psychology of Terrorism and Genocide. And for some reason that course is helping her in her understanding and her working with those little tiny students. And this week, Howard Schultz, the chairman and CEO of 
of uh, Starbucks came and spoke here. We didn't have a big enough place to hold everybody that wanted to come and see him. And one student raised her hand and asked a question. She'd been to Bangkok and they didn't have free Wi-Fi in the Starbucks in Bangkok. And what could Howard Schultz do about that? Uh, he said, sorry, but the city itself doesn't quite have what they need. And we had a career expo and there were 75 countries that came and 75 companies that came and were trying to recruit our students. And I learned this week that in the United States, if you only have a high school degree, 17% of people with just a high school degree are unemployed. And people with a community college degree, 7% are unemployed. And people with a college degree, 4.1% are unemployed. It does make a difference. All this has happened since I washed the feet of some of our students on Holy Thursday and then celebrated Easter Sunday with them. So we've accepted you and we hope that you will accept us. We hope that your name will be on a letter by, November, by May the 1st indicating to us that you've accepted Seattle University. And my fond dream would be that my name will be on your diploma graduating from this university. Thank you very much.